Jason, Michael, Matt. We have just arrived in Rome. Kind of an interesting little thing going on here. I'm very, very glad to, to let you know the Vatican is still busy at the most important issue of the day, and that is saving the planet. So you see the obelisk is no longer lit up. You can see the dome is much less lit up than it used to, <laughs> used to be. They're cutting down on the electricity. You know how Francis doesn't like the electricity bit. It reminds me of, what was that guy's name? Um, Sir Edward Grey, World War I. He was like defense minister in, in England right before the war. He said the lamps are going out all over Europe and they will not be relit in our lifetime. I don't know. It feels like a metaphor for this uh, synod on synodality, which we're here to cover. Uh, everything is kind of going out, you know. I mean, if you just kind of look around this place and you think of the magnificence of what we're looking at, and I'm not talking about just the buildings and the, you know, the architecture, the beautiful statues, the colonnade. This is the epicenter of Christendom. And by that, I mean the epicenter of the greatest civilization, including a political entity, power, a powerful political entity that shaped history for a thousand years. This is the epicenter of the whole thing. And this is also the epicenter of the greatest art, uh, an explosion of art, of, of, of uh, poetry, of plays, of sculpture. I mean, everything you can think of, uh, jurisprudence, philosophy, theology, all the things that are so make, make, make you know, our world so interesting and so much better and so much more beautiful. People still talking about it thousands of years. Like, this is the epicenter of the whole thing. All right, so what, what happened? What happened? And that's what the Synod on Synodality just, the, just drives home the point. What the heck happened to bring all these strange creatures from the, <laughs> the island of misfits, cardinals, bishops, and priests, they come in here, they're talking about what? I don't know. Father John Reese, who's a lefty, he came out the other day and said, the conservatives are not here because they think that Francis has handed everything down to the tables. He's lost. He doesn't. He has not achieved the victories that he wanted with women deacons and all that. Well, that's all still coming, of course. I would argue that the conservatives aren't here because they don't know what to do with this synod. You know, who are these people? Who are these strange creatures who have taken over the Catholic Church? But one thing you notice, and you'll notice this if you see anybody, whether it's Father Jimmy Martin or Cardinal Tobin, whoever it is, being interviewed about the synod on Synod Alley, what do they bring up? Every single time they bring up the tables. They literally bring up the tables where they go and sit, where the synod people go and sit. I'm going to say synod fathers, but it's not fathers anymore, trust me. The little tables, the small groups, the breakout sessions, you know. So what they're saying basically is at the breakout sessions, at the little tables, there's a sacred thing happening. The Holy Spirit animates the tables now because those people who are sitting at the tables they went and listened to, dis, to, to, to folks who no longer practice the faith, who don't like the church, who don't like the dogmas and doctrines of the church. Most of them, they want to see massive change at every level. And this, they're claiming, is the Holy Spirit and the God of surprises manifesting himself at the tables so that eventually Francis is just going to have to change everything. And deacons and probably even eventually women priests. I know, I've heard it with my own ears, bishops here at this synod saying that eventually, yes, of course, women priests. So yeah, it's, we're, we're, we're here to cover it because somebody has to chronicle what's going on. This infiltration of the church, this dismantling of the church, <laughs> turning the lights off right now as if to say, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. We're turning the lights off on Christendom. That's what we're doing to go along with, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the modern world. And there's so much, the, the good news is, there's so many people here who are pushing back. Cardinal Muller, God bless him, Gerhard Muller once again came out this week with a strong statement against what's happening here. Cardinal Joseph Zen, God bless him, also praying for the end of this nightmare synod, which is what it is. Uh, so you, you have a lot of that going on. But I think for us to be here during the synod now, um, there's just such a, there's a pal that's come over the Catholic Church and you just, it's, 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 it's tangible, palpable here uh, in Rome, especially. I always talk about this window right here. It was a papal window where the popes used to come. So when you would come to St. Peter's in the past, whether it was John Paul or Benedict, whoever, that light would be on. It meant the Holy Father was there. He's looking down over, over his people in a father lovingly pastoral way. Well, that light's out now. And Francis, who knows where Francis is right now? He was hiding out in the hotel over here behind the Vatican Gardens of Santa Marta. But it's just kind of got another little metaphor of what's happened to the church. If Francis is just too darn good to, to live where everybody else lived. Everything is just in flux and revolution and falling apart. 
And in the middle of it all is this ridiculous synod on synodality, which is trying to make it official that the Catholic Church has hoisted the white flag of surrender on all, of, even, even the moral issues. I mean, who would have thought when the colonnade was built or the dome of Michelangelo was built, who would have thought the day was coming when a pope would come out and say, you know what we need to do? We need to bless gay couples. Homosexual couples need to give themselves a little blessing in the world today. Who would have thought? No one could even imagine something so absurd. You know, who would have thought the day was coming when a pope, you think about Thomas More and, and you know, the King Henry VIII affair, the divorce, the, the war the church fought over the indissolubility of marriage in England, for example, tore Christendom apart, right? Who would have thought a day was coming when a pope would say, you know what, divorce and remarried people should be allowed to have communion, probably. We're working on that, the synod, that's part of the synod on synod. You know what I mean? Like, they're just dismantling everything. So we're going to do our best to find the, the resistance, and there is a lot of it. But I do fear that at least... Because, because you, gotta, you have to remember, and this is where it gets less depressing than it may seem sometimes, the church is just fine. The church triumphant is just fine in heaven. The church suffering in purgatory is just fine. It's the church militant. The church is human element that is in absolute chaos right now because the devil is trying to destroy the Catholic church because once it's completely gone, the world goes to hell. And that's the whole point. And the synod on synodality, in my opinion, is part of that sellout, that major surrender of the Catholic Church to the spirit of the age. It's been coming for a long time. This is not just Francis is doing. This comes to the Second Vatican Council before, even before that. We always talk about Pius X back in 1907, writing encyclicals like Pascendi, warning that modernists were at the heart and bosom of the church. They were going to destroy the church, right? They're trying to destroy the human element of the church. There's no surprise here. The synod on synodality is just Pope St. Pius X's wake-up screaming nightmare. They're all out of the closet now, and that's what's happening here. I don't think anybody, even Pius X, suspected that it would be a homo synodality issue, <laughs> that there would be this much uh, discussion of homosexuality and LGBT and all of that. I mean, that's the, that's the part where it just makes you want to cry. Just, it's heartbreaking, this, the, the shocking scandal that they're, these, these men at this synod are sending throughout the whole world on, the, on these moral issues. But the good news is there's a lot of pushback. The good news is we always knew this was coming. The good news is modernism is deadly. It's the undertaker of the church. And what we're seeing at the Synod on Synodality is just proof of that. Once it dies to death, God will restore his church. And that's what we have to do. But in the meantime, we're here this week to sort of report on them. Let history, tell, tell the future historians what happened here. Name the names. Tell, tell the historians who it was that tried to destroy Christ church, who it was, and then who it was that failed, because ultimately they will fail to destroy not only this beautiful place, but the church itself. The bride of Christ will is in violence. She, she, she cannot be destroyed. She will not be destroyed, no matter how hard they try. But that they are trying to destroy and undermine her, in my opinion, why, that's a no-brainer. That's exactly what's going on here. Nobody else in the world even cares. Just the last little residual bit of evil modernism here in the church trying to bury the catholic church as the world just plummets into hell anyway you know the catholic church is just becoming so irrelevant but they want to put the fine they want to make sure it can never rise again never come back well that's not going to happen so follow us hopefully you know uh keep track of what's going on here we'll get some stories hopefully some interviews this week uh the good and the bad about the synod on synodality and how this whole thing is going to play out the great news is this is it finally it's going to be over let's hope this is the conclusion of this of the synod uh, and so maybe it'll be, he'll die a good, uh, a good death and we won't have to talk about it anymore. Anyway, Michael Matt from Rome, uh, God bless you all. Keep praying for the church and we'll see you tomorrow.